morning. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Would you say to your neighbor, peace to you. Peace to your house. Peace to all that you have. And great peace to our beloved nation, Nigeria. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And the people said, Amen. I want you to turn to your left and turn to your right and say, Welcome to God's citadel. Welcome to your citadel. Your citadel. Your citadel. My, citadel. My citadel. And our citadel. Our citadel. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. We are stars are born and great futures are created. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yesterday, I spoke on the subject left to men would have been history. But God has made our lives a tale that is told, an incredible story for others to read. And learn from. I would like to continue this morning. With biblical heroes of faith. Who through the ups and downs of life. And who despite the twists and turns in their stories. Became the trophies of God's grace. Trophies of his mercy. His goodness. His faithfulness. His loving kindness and his favor, so that none of us can remain mere men with foolish excuses. By God's grace today, I would like to give you a guided tour of the crucible in which real men are forged. But before I do so, let me thank those of you who have come so early this morning. This perhaps is the only session I'll be handling today. Because one of my cousins from the village will be getting married today. And as the head of the family, I can't excuse myself from such commitment, especially when they are choosing the date, and I agree with them, and so I have to be there. It's not easy to be head of family. It's okay when I was just one of them, but out of my father's 22 children, I'm the only one alive, and therefore a lot of responsibilities upon me. But all my friends who will be here, they are more than able. After this session of two, Pastor James will be his turn. He just got to know some 10 minutes ago. And the third session will be handled by Pastor Shola Desoye. I was the one who took your seats. They placed you and your wife side by side, but you are not here, so I took it. So come early next tomorrow. <laughs> I know you don't mind. I gave those seats to my friend and his wife. When the history of my life is written, it's impossible for their names not to be mentioned. When the university together, I think it was a year ahead of me. I think you graduated in 78 or 79. 78, that would be two years ahead of me. It was in Jaja Hall. And I used to write Sunday, what was it called? Every Sunday. I would write and I would distribute to all the hostels. It was in the same room. Where is Pastor Ige? He's not here. It was in the same room with your brother. You remember Ige? Uh -huh. They were in the same room. 
He had all kinds of Christian posters on his wall. And I would distribute these flyers there. In the process, we became friends. I found out that he was going to Apostolic Church. I said, Apostolic Church cannot come there. <laughs> so I dragged him to Foursquare, your church. <laughs> That's Pastor Lodola. I'd not met his wife then. He had not met the wife. They met the only you call. And when he met her, and she, well, I wouldn't say you confounded him. He said, this is the person I'd like to marry. Don't they? He said, yes. A brother Ta. <laughs> He's a brother Ja. He said, you have to come to Kanu. I found the person I'd like to marry. I'd like to come and see. But the story did not begin there. When I became a Christian, I was kicked out of the house. There was no place to lay my head. And the only place I could take refuge was the campus as a student. So there was student crisis, and it was time for us to go home. I'd taken my luggage. I took my portmanteau to Professor Gideon Shinto Kun's house, and I kept it there. So I was waiting at the bus stop to be taken that morning to the gate, from there to Yaba, to look for transportation back to Abel Kuta to go and join my mother. And he was driving a red Volvo, this man. <laughs> God deal. As soon as he saw me, he said, I brought a tie. I said, I brought a guy. He said, where are you going? I said, nowhere. <laughs> I didn't know where I was going. I said, I will have to return to Abel Kuta. I said, no, 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 no. Enter this vehicle. We'll go to my house and I will tell my brother that uh, there was student crisis and you stay with us. Lo and behold, I stayed in that house for two years. And that's the house of Chief Eski and of the Ashwaju of Remo Kingdom. But I came that evening, I was panicking inside. I, I don't know what this man will say because everywhere I went, they had a way of showing me the way out. He wore a yellow t-shirt on a shirt. And just went, to, my friend from school, he's here to stay with us. I said, that's okay, that's okay. He left me in that house to go to Yuko, to go for Yuko. I went to Kano to check her from head to toe. I applied all the scriptural rules I know. What does she look like? Will she be a good wife? Will she be a bad wife? We prayed and prayed and prayed and said, yes, yes, yes. I was their best man in 1980. I didn't shed tears then. The day I shed tears was when their first daughter got married. When she was born in Port Harcourt, I had to travel down to carry to Louis in my hand. She's still my daughter till tomorrow. She calls me dad. The day Tolu got married, and I had to join her and her husband to pronounce them husband and wife, I just started crying. Now, something happened that's like a, 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 a twist in the story. I told Josie when we settled in their home, uh, I said, my mother will be worried. I'd like to go and see her, because she knew there was crisis in the campus. And she said, I will take you to Abel Kuta. He drove me to Abel Kuta. We eventually located, not relocated, we got to my mother's place. <laughs> and we entered. I said, Mama, I said, where have you been? I said, I've been staying with this, my friend. Eh, 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 ma shehu, adupehu, eh, shekupo. Omo bo lehi, oni shagamu. This man. Ki loro koni. And Joshua ni, Uruko Baba ni, Efu Akwe ni. Mama said, Efu Akwe bo. Tell me who your father is. My mother is ni Efu Akwe. His father is from Abel Kuta. He settled in Shagamu, married a woman there, and they changed the name from Efu Akwe to Efu Akwe. We had to point out his father's house to him in Abel Kuta. <laughs> Babasoku soja, arali eninimba, 
the day he was giving me that leave to their house, he did not know he was carrying a relation. Shere shayere o, shere shayere o, eni ayeko shayere. I'm grateful to you. You occupy a major place in my memoir. It's already written and recorded so that others can learn that you don't despise people. You don't. Don't despise people. I remember when brother's business needed expansion. They needed two billion. And the son who was running the business came to me and said, Brasley, we need help. I said, what help? This and this and this, Central Bank Governor, this and this. I said, okay, I'm traveling, meet me in Abuja. So he came to Abuja, and I called the CBN governor into my suite. I said, you see this man's father, house me, release the money to them. And Tokwe came back to me and said, what can I give you? I said, your father paid for it when he housed me. When Kola needed accommodation for his business, I gave him my house in Okwebi. Go and use it for your office. Your father paid for it. They didn't see that today we come. But they've been good to me. And I remember such people. I can't forget them. If you get to the top and you forget those who help you to get there, you are an idiot. Let the world know them. Give them place of honor. It doesn't matter where you are now. The cup of water they gave you brought you thus far. My son had to go to Abel Kuta one day to go look for Alaji Fasasi because he had the story. He had to go and do a film. When I was living in Abel Kuta in 1973, Alaji Fasasi in the whole neighborhood was the only person who gave me three pence. My mother gave me one shilling. That if five years after, I built an eight-bedroom house for him as return on investment. I said, thank you for the three pence you gave to me. And I was going. Who do you remember? You open Romans 16. You see names. Some of them sound like... Uh, <laughs> They didn't preach. They didn't have a church, maybe church in the house, some of them. But Paul listed the names of those who helped him. But you are a self-made man. And suddenly you become self-centered and selfish. And those who help you to climb, when you get to the top, you remove the ladder. And you are now throwing fish at them instead of giving, teaching them how to fish. I want you to please appreciate my friend and his wife. Thank you so very much. You will, I will continue to embarrass you till we see God in glory. Uh -huh. You say, you have said this too much. How about the things you have done for us? I don't know about those words. The fruit, the harvest is always greater than the seed. So no matter what you do for them, just know that the seed they sowed is the harvest they are receiving. Hallelujah. Am I wasting your time? Okay. A few days ago, on March the 15th, I gave a lecture in Abuja for the 70th birthday of Pastor Ezekiel Zili, Obi's husband. Titled Purpose as True Power. It was a lecture for real men. I will post it on the Gain Network today so that you can have access to it because I really x rayed who real men are. That you have a stick in between your ties does not make you a man. If you're a real man, you'll find out who you are. 
I also received a post this morning. And I'm so, so glad for this one. And you'll find out why. I'll read it to you. My treasure of inestimable value, my father, my friend, God's rod of correction sometimes, my teacher and my daddy, just to mention very few of what you are to me. I want to simply say thank you for your obedience 35 years ago. I am who I am today simply because you obey and keep obeying. Keep obeying God every step of the way since then. Your obedience birthed me. Yes, Papa. Simply by walking into Lateran Assembly on March 9, 1992, we had had an encounter with the Lord. It's a very rare privilege to be able to pay you directly. I just want to say thank you for what you stand for. Without knowing me, you built me up in faith. Pump godly kind of courage into me. I used to be intimidated, fearful, and very timid, thanks to my biological father. Winning by righteousness has become a way of life to me just because you live and walk the work of faith daily for us to see. My prayer for you as we journey on is very simple. Papa, that's why I'm reading it to you. Be careful who you are becoming. Papa, the Lord will perfect you just as he has written concerning you. He will keep, protect, perfect all that concerns you. Mama, she has always been beautiful. Who does not know? I know. I opened my eyes before I married her. Hmm? She has always been beautiful, but the glow during Thanksgiving yesterday was glorious. The fivefold ministry, the CGC's family, other extended family members, and the nation at large. Happy 35th anniversary. This is my daughter, Shade, from Ohio, that I'd never seen physically face to face. I only saw her on video call once or twice. Do you know how many lives your giving, your fasting, your praying has changed? Don't give up because some will come to you in heaven and say thank you. After the Thanksgiving yesterday, a missionary in Morocco wrote to me, you may be listening now. He said, sir, as many as missionaries that are ready to be sent to Libya and North African countries, we are ready to sponsor them. <laughs> if my one life can touch many people, imagine how many more people we can touch if we together become real people. Malachi 3, beginning from verse 1 to 5. Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. Who is that messenger? I can't hear you. <laughs> Behold, I send my messenger, and he will prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek will suddenly come to his temple. Even the messenger of the covenant, in whom you delight, behold, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who can endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire. And like Londra's soul. It will sit as a refiner and a purifier of silver. It will purify the sons of Levi and put them as gold and silver that they may offer to the Lord an offering in right. It doesn't take every offering. I'm not sure you know that. All those stolen wealth from the resources of the nation that they bring to the temple and dump in your hand and you say they are now Christians, he doesn't take them. He receives an offering in righteousness. And when an offering in righteousness is made to him, then the offering of Judah 
and Jerusalem will be pleasant to the Lord as in the days of old, as in former years. And I will come near you for judgment. Once you receive an offering in righteousness, then he comes in to judge every man in there to see whether they are doing his bidding or they are doing their own. And he gives us a list of those he will judge. I'll be a sweet witness against sorcerers, against adulterers, against perjurers, against those who exploit wage earners. You know how they exploit them? The Lord said to me today, if I can give $10,000, that's all the man has. The Lord is going to make you a millionaire before the end of the, uh, end of the month. You exploit them. You manipulate them. You push them to give what they don't have. They go home broke. You go home laughing. Go and ask what he did to Eli and Ophni and Phineas. He killed them all in one day. And he said, you are, you are messing up with my sacrifice. It's not yours. Against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans. And against those who turn away an alien. Because they do not fear me, says the Lord of hosts. Pastor Olus, you can remember this very well. Two given situations. One was Komodo Shapurore. You remember? Usually, his tithe and offering was no more than 20 something thousand. And then he brought huh? 140,000. You will remember. Olu said, Sir, this man has not given this type of offering before. We need to examine where he got it from. So I called him into the office. How did you come by this money you are giving us? He said, Ah, sir, the house that was allocated to me in Festa, I sold it. This is the tithe. This is the transaction. This is the this house. I said, okay, you can receive it from him. That's what built here. You remember Captain? Captain also brought 50,000. You remember that? On a good day. 50,000 then was like 50 million to us. We were building. We were reconstructing. And again, so that is good afternoon. So again. And they put the 50,000 down. And straight behind him was like a television. And I said, Captain, who is this girl that you tie down in the hotel? He said, Ha. I said, You tie down someone in the hotel. He looked at us and said, Take your money and go. Eventually, it was a young girl. He said, She wait for him in the hotel and went to sleep with her. The thing was exposed and it was dealt with. Time had come for us to pastor supernaturally. For God to open our eyes, not to hang around those who will hinder us from making a mark on this planet. I'm not telling you stories to just cook it up. They were living witnesses. I remember our lead singer in those days, Jury, who, who, was, who was the person who took me there? Were you there? It was Pastor Joseph. You were in one. My daughter, the pharmacist. Uh, is she here? Mrs. Okedegbe? She was on Mrs. Okedegbe then. It was about 11 p.m. As I located his house, you followed me. You went there. There was no light when we got there. It was, it was either lantern. I went in there about 11 p.m. I said, the Lord asked me to come and tell you you're about to die. Stop the relationship you are involved with now. It's going to short circuit your destiny. And she turned to me and said, when I was pregnant, I came to you. That I would like to terminate the pregnancy. You said, I shouldn't. That you will stand by me. Now you have stood by me. Who will marry me? I said, be careful. Stay within the boundary of righteousness. 
Olu's online left. I said, I came to warn you. We left. The following day, the same married man came to carry her to a party. And she remembered the one in the night before. I said, go to your party. I will come and join you there. So she didn't go with them. On the way they had an accident, everybody died. She ran to church. Now she's married to a man who had never been married before, who had no child. And they are raising quality family. I can count. I can go on and on. The lead singer, the one that was leading our songs, if she was singing, you would think heaven had come down in those days. And it was time for her to marry. And I did a thorough examination because I will not join people that God has not joined. As they gave me a paper, suddenly I saw a screen behind them that she was in the house of the person she was about to get married to. I told Pastor Joseph, let's go. Do you know the place? We had a silly reserve. She lives in Suru Lere. The husband to be lives in Suru place. I said, go to the husband's place. They sent some little boy to buy coke. We saw that one on the way. He took us to the room. The thought is the one. As I opened the door, hang out. They were both in towel. I said, ah, eh, well, eh. Ibi call it my mari. This is not wedju, wedju. This is God opening your eyes to know the people you are pastoring. If you don't operate in discernment, you will do all kinds of crooked things and you will stand before God to give account. Lift up your hand and say, Lord, open my eyes. Enlighten my eyes of understanding. I am not a mere man. I'm a spiritual man. I'm a real man. Give me grace to pastor supernaturally, to know the things I need to know, so that I do not endorse what you reject in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. If you can recall, I pointed out last night that one major difference between mere men and real men is that mere men are perilous men, while real men are good men, harmless men, and great benefactors. Real men are calm men. You can call them gentlemen. When they say someone is a gentleman, is a man that will keep his word, no matter the circumstances. When I saw my friends today, I told them, I apologize for not being able to come and see you, but I've not been I've not settled anywhere. I've gone here, gone there, gone here since the return from America. I said, don't worry, next time I will create time. I had to apologize, not because they said you didn't come to greet us, but they came. They, my wife did not even know they were in town. Real men are gentlemen. You can count on their word. You were not there when I was speaking about you yesterday at the digital company, uh, what is what digital academy. You remember the the training we did online, yourself and your son from Kaduna, and I said, okay, there's one way to help our people. And God supplied the resources. We opened our own multi-million Naira Digital Academy for the benefit of those who are jobless and those who do not have skill so that they can be trained. And then I said something about you. I said, in all my dealings with you, you have never given me a bill that I query one time. Why? Because I trust you. If I don't, I will dot my eyes and cross my teeth. God give us men whose word you can count on. I can call Wally, I can call you. I remember the day I needed help in Toronto for someone to bring books that were left in London. I called you straight. I said, we need this book tomorrow by this time. And da, 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 da. I said, leave it to me, sir. Put someone in the plane to come. Is he my servant? 
How many times have I called this, transfer this to this person, transfer that to that person? If I come back and give excuses, will you transfer next time? You must become gentlemen. People can rely on our word. I'm a local. Uh -huh. I will give you my own gift now that you have done the burial. Oh, have you, you have done it? Uh -huh. So I get pocket money for your apple. Because if I had given it to you, what you will feed other people. <laughs> when my mother died, I didn't buy any cow. They gave me 28 cows. Because my mother was born 28th of October. <laughs> Praise God. Are we real men? Are we the salt of the earth? Are we the light of the world? Are we really a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden? Can men be their chest for your character? Because of time, I want to keep time because of the next speaker is coming in at 11.30. From 2 Timothy chapter 3, 1 to 7, that we read last night, there are at least 20 qualities of mere men. Whether they are rich or poor, they are mere men because they are perilous men because they do hazardous and dangerous things. 20 qualities, 20 characteristics, their traits were painted for us to see. Number one, in verse one, he said, But know this that in the last days, very lost times will come. Why? For men will be lovers of themselves. He gave 20 characteristics of who they are, so that by just the designing of the word, you can figure out who is around you. <laughs> it doesn't matter what happens here. Don't give me excuses, just tell me. I accept responsibility, I'm wrong. That's the end. I'll just walk away. But to be playing diplomatic game with me, ah. Number one, they are lovers of themselves. Number two, they are lovers of money. Only tie one and collect change. They are lovers of money. The love of money is the root of all evils. They are lovers of money. They are boasters, number three. They are proud, number four. They are blasphemers, number five. They are disobedient to parents. They are disobedient to parents. They are unthankful. What does it mean to be unthankful? You only have... A sense of entitlement. They are unholy. Number eight. Number nine. They are unloving. Because they only love themselves. Number ten. They are unforgiving. Number eleven. They are slanderers. One of my sons came to me to report someone had helped. And they reported you too to me. As I said, this way. Yes, you did a good thing. I will tell you what you did. You are so angry with me that all these useless people, I should not allow them around me anymore. I should just push them away. <laughs> they came to tell me that even Pastor Shola, so even when you're here, you can read one. I said, I will tell you, don't worry. You know me. You are about to sort of me. Oh my friend, so some pile. I go. I said, you talk about yourself. He said, what is super social? I'm going to win your ten tolerate you. And truly, they should not be tolerated. But I'm a footmark for everyone to get to the door. So this man that had helped, I took him to Buari 56 times. Now sat down and slandered me, and slandered me, and slandered me. And one of those who heard said, I want you to call him and call me to repeat what he said about you to me. I said, it is not necessary. But I beg you, tell him to publish whatever he knows about me. Any secret that he knows, 
If he doesn't publish it, then God will judge him. I can't waste my time saying, she will survive. I both survive. Who cares? They are slanderers. The only way you know they've gotten to the top is when they slander other people. They are slanderers. Number 12, they are without self-control. Number 13, they are brutal. Number 14, they are despisers of what is good. Number 15, they are traitors. Number 16, they are headstrong. Number 17, they are haughty. Number 18, they are lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Number 19, they have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. You see them, they bind their hair, bind their head, and but inside it's like they are like wet my sepulchre, full of dead men's rotting bones. They have a form of godliness, but deny the power thereof. Number 20, they are always learning, never able to come to the knowledge of truth. Why did I list them one by one? Because that's the way I study my own Bible. I want to find out. So if I see this type of trace in a person, I know it's a mere man. There's no point praying, uh, shall I engage them? No, don't bring serpent on your lap. Don't put fire in your house. You know them by their fruits. But can I tell you something? If you are willing to take it, these are not traits of a born-again Christian. No. If a person is genuinely born again, this cannot be a straight. I know about false brethren, but this is not, these are not characteristics of a child of God. When they sin, they groan, they mourn. When they make mistakes, they admit. They do not hide under the umbrella of one finger. Sir, why did I say this cannot be born again people? Because verse number 8 defines their disposition. Verse 8. 2 Timothy 3, 8 reveals three dispositions of such men. Just like the magicians who resisted Moses, so do these also resist the truth. There is no person who is born again who will not be lover of truth. Pastor Simeon, many years ago, you preached in a church that because they have no love for the truth, God will send them a strong delusion to believe a lie. Oh, you didn't preach it. You call it Alethea. I wrote your name by it. Today you preached it. I learned from everyone around me. They resist the truth. Number two, they are men of corrupt minds. And number three, they are disapproved concerning the faith. So they cannot be Christians. They are disapproved. They will make them deacons because of the size of money they have. They sit in our front row. We call them deacons, but they are demonized deacons. They seek to overthrow anything God wants to do. This cannot be the kind of people we are raising. Or else we will cry on the day of judgment. But you can begin to dance as a thank God. Although I can see some of these traces in me. He has said this cannot be born again believer, so I'm free. Hallelujah. Huh? I'd like to share something with you. The Bible points out in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse number 1, there are two kinds of filthiness. There's a filthiness of the flesh, and there's a filthiness of the spirit. Therefore, having these promises, beloved, 
let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. How many categories of filthiness do we have? Two. One is called filthiness of the flesh. The other is called filthiness of the spirit. Now listen to me. Why do we see the, the moat in our brother's eyes when we carry log in our own? None of this filthiness is good, but the filthiness of the spirit is worse. And more often than not, charismatics carry in them filthiness of the spirit. Let's read the most charismatic church founded by Paul, the Corinthian church. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, see all the gifts of the spirit in our prison in their midst. Let's read up to verse 10. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning from verse 1, Paul called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and sustenance our brother to the church of God which is at Corinth to those who are you have to read with me to those who are sanctified in Christ Jesus called to be saints with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ our Lord both theirs and ours they were calling on the name of the Lord they were sanctified they were relying on Jesus praying Paul now said grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always concerning you for the grace of God which was given to you by Christ Jesus. So they had grace. So I can't do this this morning, maybe sometimes in the day or later in the course. I will show you the true grace that we stand in. So that you don't believe about false grace. Peter the Apostle said, this is the true grace in which you stand. That you were enriched in everything by him, in all utterance and all knowledge, even as his testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. Are these believers or unbelievers? I can't hear you. I took my entire family to Corinth to go and see the broken, the, the, the broken walls and relics of that church when we went to Greece. Many of them were former gays who believed. So that you come short in no gift. This is the only book where Paul displayed all the gifts of the Spirit for us. You, you come short in no eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will also confirm you to the end that you may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you are called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Would you put your hands together for this Corinthian church? They had everything going. They are fantastic. They are even better than many of our charismatic churches today. Now I plead with you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all speak the same thing, do we? And there be no divisions among you. But that you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. Verse 11. Thank you. For it has been declared to me concerning you, my brethren, by those of Chloe's household. Each time you buy Chloe perfume, remember this. It has been declared to me concerning you, by brethren, by those of Chloe's household, that there are contentions among you. Tell your neighbor, there's no room for the bone of contention in the body of Christ. There are contentions among you. With all the charismatic gifts, with all the grace poured unto them, or poured upon them. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and see their filthiness of the Spirit. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 1. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ, with all your knowledge, 
with all the utterances, with all the grace. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. You can stop there and come there for an hour to distinguish or differentiate the difference between milk and solid food. Hebrews tells us that strong meat belong to them who by reason of use have their senses disciplined that they may design what is good from what is evil. But even milk, the standard of milk, we cannot, we cannot even take. We cannot boast that our church already are fed with milk. You say, why do you say so? Give me 1 Peter chapter 2. I'll come back to 1 Corinthians 1 Peter chapter 2. Let's see the standard of pure milk. 1 Peter chapter 2 is not in my note. You have to get it there. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babe, desire the pure milk of the world that you may grow thereby. So if you're already feeding on milk, there's no malice. There's no deceit, there's no hypocrisy, there's no evil speaking. By the time somebody brings a report to you and says, the fellow said, so okay, I'll call him, and say, it's between you and I. He has, he has not even mastered milk. And those who like to derail you and distract you, tell you things you want to hear. And you begin to see other people through what they have told you. Let's go back to the filthiness of the spirit in the Corinthian church. First Corinthians chapter 3. There are four principal things there. The code name for it is carnality. First Peter 3. I mean, First Corinthians 3. I beg your pardon. First Corinthians 3. Many people you think are mature believers, they have not even mastered milk. And if you think you have mastered milk, you are now on strong meat, revelatory truth. Do you stop still taking milk in your tea? And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now you are not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. For you are still carnal. Why do we know they are carnal? For well, where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like? Tell your neighbor, we are not mere men. <laughs> Say to him, we are not mere men. Wake up and smell the coffee. Christ did not come here to waste his sacrifice. We are not mere men. Anywhere you see contention, you see envy, you see strife, you see a jealous spirit. People trying to pull others down because they want to be the only one known. They are carnal. Can I give you biblical definition of carnality so that you know what it is? Romans 8, verse 6. I'll let the scriptures speak to you. There is no matter they will bring to me. Ask any of our leaders. I said, hmm, I've heard you. Call all the parties. Pastor Ike, not be so. Call all the parties. You must get to the root of this. Where is this coming from? I am Pastor, I need to say, no, I like to see the root. For to be carnally minded is so how many dead people are walking in your church and operating? To be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Go on. Verse 7. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. How can you receive visions, revelations, and see dreams and, and hear the voice of the Spirit when you are his enemy? Because the carnal kind of mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Do you understand me? Those who are in the flesh cannot... What is flesh? Hidden disposition to do evil. That's what flesh is. A hidden disposition in us to do evil. He raises his ugly head almost on daily basis Paul said, I beat my body blue black. I keep it under, lest after I've preached to others, I myself become a castaway. 
Are we me amen? Answer me. With the way we carry ourselves out. Are we not me amen? amen? And God wants real men. What is the really Nigeria up to now is that we do not have real men in charge of our economy, in charge of our politics, in charge of the things we are doing. There are no real men there. And God is raising behind the scene in the desert, raising real men. I have nine minutes to go. The moment this letter poisons get into you, division, contention, envy, jealousy, and, and, and strife, the Bible says wherever there is strife, there will be all manner of evil things. I taught this church that wherever you see strife, you are about to have demonic Olympics. All kinds of demons will show up. Manifesting themselves. The crucibles. I will bring out. In the next time that I have opportunity. I will show you what the crucibles are. Where real men are forged. And no matter what. Even at gunpoint, they will not deny their faith. They will still stand strong. Do you understand me? There is a divine crucible where God takes every man that will be a real man. And except you go through it, tested on all points, he cannot commit to those he has not tested. He won't trust them either. He uses tested, rugged vessels. Is Shagun there somewhere? If Shagun is not there, my wife was there. It was 10 years ago. My sixth year birthday. They drove a brand new Rolls Royce into my premises. I'd never bought a Rolls Royce before. I've had occasions to ride Rolls Royce in Dubai. I take them from Bojan Arab Hotel to the airport all the time. So I've had a fear of Rolls Royce. And I'd never bought one. So they bought a brand new 2023 Rolls Royce to my house. My son was so glad. He took his camera. My wife and I came down. I was in my house coat. <laughs> they opened the Rolls Royce. Sir, when you open your car, your door goes that way. Rolls Royce goes this way. So that nothing can hinder your Albada. I sat at the back. And there are buttons in each door. You push the button, umbrella will come out. China wonder. As I sat, my son was taking chana, chana. What the girl was going on? <laughs> so I called those who brought it. I said, um, where is this from? I said, the president. So I said, no, I need the name of a person. So I can thank the person who gives it to me. I have nobody in my life called president. I don't know anybody like that. I ask them a second question. Is this a gift to every Nigerian who turns 60? So that I know it's a right. I said, no, sir, we just have to make it. I said, okay, let's go outside. See the road. Where will I drive it on? Take it out of here. Shagun will tell you how angry he was. Why do you want to make enemies for yourself? Did you beg them? They brought it. I looked at him. I just went into my study. <laughs> End of story. When they arrested, 
Huh? That's okay. And they started writing those to give cars to. <laughs> Your sincerely name was not there. Hallelujah. But I will ride a Rolls Royce when you buy me one. When you say, Dad, happy birthday, this is Rolls Royce for you. I will take it. Even if there's no road, I will create a road. <laughs> if I cannot win by righteousness, I'm prepared to lose. I told the gentleman, but this will damage my brand. It will damage my brand. Is Soji here? I think you know about this. We were in Transcorp Hilton, and they brought 980,000 US dollars to my suit. Four men brought it to me. I said, how much is it to turn? 980. I said, eh, eh. Somebody must have taken out of it. If they want to give me money, they, they will give me a million. It can't be 980. Somebody took out of this. I said, nobody took it out of it. You can call them. So I said, okay, this is what you will do. Take it back to them. I will collect it on my way to the airport tomorrow. I never went back. I know those who took it. Hmm? I didn't take tight. I didn't take money. To be honest with you, this is how we wreck ourselves. And we become blind. And we don't see anymore. So we need to go to the crucible. And by God's grace, in my next session, we'll all go there. Only in contact with there must have been some sovereign work done in you. I will not let you fall by the wayside. That you know what is a gift and what is a bribe. And what will shut your mouth in the days to come. Stand to your feet. Do your work sovereignly in me, Lord. Pray. Do your work sovereignly in me. No envy, no strife, no division, no contention. We are not mere men. 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 We are real men. We are mighty men and women of valor. Do your work in us, O oh Lord. Do your work in us sovereignly. Help us, Father. Jesus is the express image of the invisible God. And we are predestined to be conformed to the image of the Son of His Lord. Everything Christ said no to, we must say no to it. It was tested on all points, yet it did not sin. It became sin for us so that we might be made the righteousness of God in Him. Help me, Father, not to fail, not to fall, not to falter. Keep me strong till the very end, Lord. I am not a mere man. No filthiness of the flesh, no filthiness of the spirit. Cleanse me, help me to perfect holiness and the fear of God. I thank you for answers coming from your presence. That we will leave this place changed and transformed to do your will. We declare with one accord, your kingdom come. Your will be done in our lives as it is in heaven. That we may be ambassadors of Christ. We are ever the Lord will send us to. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And the people said, Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope I made a little sense to you. Tell your neighbor, Oga, me o she a man mo, me o she mo, it o to get, me o she a man mo, o to get, me o she a man. Jesus paid a heavy price, not a mere man. We are not mere men, not mere men. Let's raise the standard of God's kingdom. Let our sons grow up in their youth. And let our daughters be polished after the similitude of a palace. You see the difference that will happen in our nation. God is waiting on you. He's waiting on me. We are the answers and the antidote to corruption. The whole earth is in the grip of corruption. 
awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Time had come for us to manifest. Can I hear? Amen. Please be seated. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Oh. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never, I never, will never, never be, I will I never, never be ungrateful, ungrateful to you, Lord. you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Oh. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Oh. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never, I will never, I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. 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 I will never, I will never, I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. I will never be ungrateful to you, Lord. Amen. I know you are leaving this country tomorrow. And I will create time to see you all properly. I'm a gentleman. <laughs> Hallelujah. I will go boat. You can't boat out of here. Amen. I will never be ungrateful to God. I'm human. I miss him sometimes. I go to him to help me. And once I bounce back, I bounce back. I love David. Show me in your Bible where David committed once and twice. A man after God's heart who would do all his will. He didn't say he has done. Who will do? Amen.